Today's Christmas video we celebrate with the Simpsons as we have a look at the Playmates toys. The Simpsons, this is the interactive family Christmas environment. Family Christmas features Intellitronic voice activation. Just connect any compatible World of Springfield interactive figure to hear them talk. We're going to start this review first with having a look at the diorama, then we'll have a look at the figures that come included with it. Normally at the beginning of these reviews I always like to do the measurements of each of the figures, but we would be here all day consisting of, of course, five individual figures. So instead we're just going to look at the diorama set, then we're going to look at the figures themselves. So first and foremost we have the living room area of the Simpsons household. A tree has been adorned and not quite decorated, but certainly there's gifts underneath there. Perhaps the birdhouse might be some indication that this tree was taken outside, and I'm sure there's someone living inside of there. The tree is very nicely sculpted, though very two-dimensional. Well, it's still three-dimensional. Half of it, as you can see, is just, well, you can almost even fill this like a mold and make yourself a chocolate tree. I won't do that though. Up at the top there we've got a uh, a sticker, it is yes a sticker there of Abraham Simpson, Grandpa Simpson, and one can also help but not see the uh, the two uh, sisters, Patty and Selma, sitting outside. I don't know if they've been locked out of the house and not been allowed to come in and that's the expression on their face or if they've already paid a visit they're going out for a smoke break and uh, they're just looking inward as the Simpsons are you know, engaging in the holiday festive season. I'm thinking it's actually more the first. I think they probably weren't invited and that would explain why they're so unhappy outside. It's interesting to note as well that this is just a small thing. You look across the street, there's no houses. I don't know. I don't know why that was such a big important thing for me to notice, but there are no houses on the other side of the street. It wasn't wasn't uh, George Bush at one point? George and Barbara Bush? Weren't they living across the street? I'm trying to remember the episode, but yeah, nothing. Just vacantness across the street other than, of course, Patty and Selma in the front there. I suppose in theory, if you had yourself the living room couch set up, or the kitchen set up, it could face, face this, because this would be the front of the house, and then the back of the house would be like right here, or the back of the room would be right here. Uh, maybe future videos I'll have a look at the, all of those other interactive sets if you guys would like to see them. Uh, the only other thing that's really in this room other than some curtains, a sticker indicating that there is a window, a sticker indicating hey there's a picture of Grandpa Simpson and the tree, there is a textured carpet right here which is raised from the rest of the surface of the flooring. The colors are accurate to the way it looks in the show, uh, pink walls pink trim up the top, yellow curtains and all that other stuff. And then you'll see that there's three connecting points right here with their corresponding buttons. This button works this one, this one here, and yes, this one here. You were you were right, Ryan, by yelling that across the room. On the underside, uh, now I've gone ahead and I've changed out the batteries. It takes three AA batteries, and if you've had any success rate, which is few and far between it seems, getting the Playmates Simpsons interactive sets, say, online or picking them up later and then having them just in boxes for a while. Notorious, I might say, for the batteries leaking inside and damaging the playset. Luckily for this set, the batteries didn't work because I had it sealed for a while. I didn't even open it until this review. I took a screwdriver and prayed let there not be any leakage inside as I unscrewed the screw. Well, I open it up, and sure enough, inside, what do you think I saw? A gremlin. No, that's that's not correct. Uh, what I did see was three perfectly fine batteries, in the sense that they were dead, but at least they didn't leak inside. So I just popped them out, popped in new Energizer batteries. Good as new. Works perfectly fine. On the side, you've also got, let me flip it around here. 
you got demo, off, and display. Demo only cycles through some of the phrases. Off, obviously, is off. Display is pretty much where you want to have it all the time because it will tell you, it will cycle through all the audio phrases for the following characters that we'll have a look at. By the way, it is well, and uh, if you've collected any of these sets, if for some reason you don't have a figure properly in place, it'll tell you. It also will tell you if there's no figures in place. Just want to show you a quick example. It's usually relative to the type of display base that it is. Say the Kang and Kodo set, which I never really got around to reviewing because I had surpassed the time period of Spooky Spots. I'll get around to doing those at some point. Uh, those were the Kang and Kodo set sounded like a UFO. This one being a Christmas theme, of course, pressing the button, you get Christmas bells when the characters are not connected. So there is a display base almost five minutes into this review. Let's go ahead and have a look at the figures that come included with it. And the set, let me just tip the camera down, comes with five Simpsons characters. Technically six, if you want to count Santa's Little Helper. The only other thing that comes included with it is the Simpsons piano. A little bit of, uh, I think it was styrofoam on the front there. You can see there are notes. I can't quite make it, obviously, what they are. They look actually more like scribbles. Uh, there's the back of it. It's completely hollow. And it doesn't really go anywhere in the room. In the package, the back of the packaging, they actually have the piano right here. Now, it doesn't completely cover the activation button on the back, so you don't really have to worry about that. And then the way that Marge is placed, I'll show you her, she's actually facing, her peg has her facing this way, or I guess really this way. It has her, so she's not facing forward, basically. So it would make logical sense that she is the one that's playing the Simpsons piano, talk a little bit about that in a second but we'll put the display base back there once again let's have a, a look through each of the characters that come included so we got Maggie and we got Santa's little helper collectively sort of as one figure there's no posability on them they're sort of just staction pieces itchy and scratchy or scratchy at the very least maybe it was itchy was staction as well I think actually both of them were staction there's a couple of Simpsons characters that have been like that uh, this one does have a connector point on the underside, but it is for sound effects on both the figures. Very cartoon accurate. I love the fact that they've given him also antlers on the top. Uh, there is Santa's Little Helper and Maggie. Moving along, we've got ourselves Lisa. And I'm assuming all of these, well, Lisa looks as if almost she's wearing a jacket. Bart and Marge aren't wearing jackets, and then Homer's, of course, dressed as Santa Claus, so I don't know where. Maybe she had gone out. I'm creating all, and developing all this story in my head. Maybe Lisa took out Santa's little helper on a walk, and that's why she's got a coat, unless it's a house coat. I mean, she, it looks like she is wearing boots, so I'm going to assume that she has been outside. I don't know what it is about... Uh, Lisa here, but I do feel like she's a little on the rough looking side. She is a figure that doesn't character wise translate well to three dimensions. You get sort of that spiny sort of hair that they've given her and Maggie, but the problem with her face is it just so abruptly starts right here. Her hair is completely flat. From the front, that looks like how she does in the show, and you always really only see sides of her. It's unfortunately this, this awkward looking three-dimensional sculpt that has her head just kind of sticking, her face at the very least, sticking out and while well, the rest of her head is just completely flat. It's jarring, I find, just to kind of look at it. She's got a little connector point once again on the underside. We'll look at that in a second. We'll look at Bart. I'm willing to think that the lower half, pretty much from like the neck down, is a Bart Simpson that we've seen before. Coloring may vary, of course, and if you've got like a Bartman, for example, he's going to have a cape and a mask. But like this part, I think, is pretty much consistent with other uh, Bart figures. The head sculpt could vary, varying be between expressions. This one so happens to have a Santa hat, which in case you are wondering, not removable. Can't take it off. It's molded to his head. His arms appear long, but I guess his arms seem long also in the cartoon. He has the potential to grip things. Unfortunately, he doesn't have anything to grip. 
In fact, actually, none of the characters come with any other accessories than basically what I'm showing you guys right now. Posability on, by the way, all these figures, the heads rotate, the arms rotate, and the waist swivels. And then you've got the chip underneath there. Not affected at all by the fact that the waist swivels. And there's Bart. Then we have a look at uh, Maggie. Marge. <laughs> I don't know why I said Maggie. Marge. And, uh, you know, again, she's designed essentially to be playing the piano. I mean, you could really have her as other things doing too as well. But the way that the peg works, you could have her really at the back or you could have her on the sides. But if you have her on the sides, the chips go this way. And when the chips are down, that means Marge is only going to go this way and this way, unless you have her at the very, very back. So it's entirely up to you how you want to have her displayed. She has decorated herself with some Christmas beads around her hair. Very festive looking Marge. She's also got herself a pair of earphones or uh, ear earmuffs, I guess is the word. Earmuffs. <laughs> I'm just completely drawing blanks in this review. Earmuffs which as you can probably guess it then, she probably has been out. Now she wasn't wearing a jacket. Maybe she at some point was wearing a jacket when she went out with uh, little Lisa, but has ultimately since taken the jacket off. That's my speculation. Unless maybe she's cold inside the Simpsons house and that's why she has to wear earmuffs. Articulation, again, head, arms, uh, waist, even though the waist on the other characters would be down here, her waist is quite a bit higher up. And then once again, she's got the interactive chip underneath. Last and certainly not least is March, or is Homer Simpson, which again, I don't feel like we've gotten that much of a different Homer head sculpt here than we haven't already gotten before. Smiling Homers, I'm sure we've already gotten. We've gotten also Homers that have big smiles with teeth visible. This one happens to just to be a smiling Homer. I can't help but notice though that the M hair, as well as the hair on the top, is a little on the thick side. It doesn't really sell the idea that his hair is quite sparse because the hairs are so thick. I wish they were a little bit thinner, but again, being that they had to be sculpted right to the top of his head, maybe that's the reasoning why they have to be as thick as they are. Kind of looks like we're looking at the equals sign. Head sculpt I quite like. Also dig the fact that they've given him a Santa's outfit. Doesn't have a Santa hat, unfortunately, but he more than makes up for it. Nice bright colored costume. Paints really nicely clean on this guy. It doesn't look like he's got any real problems with paint. Nice shiny boots as well. And he's got little buckles happening underneath there on the tops of his boots. There's the interactive chip. And there are your figures. Now, I'm going to move the piano or organ, I guess, if you want. We're going to move the characters over. And we're going to look at each of the interactive sound effects on each of the characters until eventually we connect all of them together. We'll start first with, why don't we start first with the one that we started looking at with figures, and that is Sans Little Helper and, uh, and Maggie. So we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, interactive peg. Three different options you can choose from. I'm just gonna opt to plug it into the back. If you feel like you've had success, don't worry, the display base will reassure you, because if you connect it properly, you'll get your first audio clip. Plugging that in place. It should have actually cycled through an audio clip. Let's try it one more time. Okay, this one actually doesn't have it, but we'll press the button. Uh, it didn't connect all the way. Let's, let's try that again. It, they're finicky connector points. You have basically the little, little, these little bead connectors that connect and line up to the cell on the underside of the figure. And then you've got these little clips on the side that clamp into these openings on either side. It's enough to secure the figure, but it does mean they're a pain in the butt to get into place. Let's try, I worked fine when I first started this. Let's plug it into another connector point. There we go. And you'll see right away, plug it into place, you'll get the reassurance with that first audio clip. So let's press the button. That's obviously not Santa's Little Helper. That's probably also not Santa's Little Helper. And that's also not Santa's Little Helper. There we go. At least he gets some audio. And there's another one. So that is, well, you know what? 
actually I was going to say we can keep them in place but I'm going to disconnect this one because we still technically have more figures than we have connector points. Let's move on to uh, Lisa here. I'm going to try the back one again because I know it did work before. Line it once again up to the connector points. Plugging in place. Let's see if I'm going to lay it down. It might be a little easier to connect them. No. Don't tell me it's this back one that's going to give me problems. We're going to try connecting her to this one. You can see right off the bat, and if you probably have collected these, these are an ongoing issue. They're never, they never connect well the first time you do it. There we go. Yeah, I just had to lean her forward a little bit. Mark got a present early, but I should get a present early. But I really want a pony. I guess I had to just lean her back a little bit. Mark got a present early, then I should get a present early. But I really want a pony. Mark got a present early, then I should get a present early. This year's tree is just perfect. It's unfortunate that it doesn't go through phrase one, phrase two, phrase three, sometimes even phrase four, and then it goes back up. It seems to randomize the phrasing and audio clips that you get. So sometimes you have several of the clips to get a brand new audio. And there is Lisa. Now let's go ahead and try Marge. Marge, I'm just going to automatically default her to this peg here because that's going to be where she's going to stand on display. There we go. There we go. Let's get her in place. Hey kids! Well, I made your there we go. Cookies. You won't be getting a tattoo for Christmas. And press the button again. I'm wondering if it. It almost hey, seems as if. I made your favorite cookies. It almost seems as if right here. I'm wondering if because the connector point is on a slight ledge of the carpeting, I have to almost tilt the figures back a little bit for them to work. It's definitely a very finicky connection. Let's try her over here. This one seems, I think, fair the best. And again. Hey kids, I made your favorite cookies. You will not be getting a tattoo for Christmas. Kids, you want to go Christmas shopping? So there is Marge. Now let's try Bart. I'm just going to skip these two. I'm going to figure them out. Oh, I'm going to figure them out. Don't worry, I'm going to figure them out before we wrap up this video. In the meantime, let's put him in, put him in the connector point. There we go. Dear Santa, I promise not to do anything bad between now and when I wake up. It's craptacular. Dear Santa, I promise not to do anything bad between now and when I wake up. There's only one fat guy that brings us presents. It's craptacular. And there's Bart. Determined to get the two connector points here figured out, let's grab Homer and put him in place now. He's sort of the same thing. He has to face a certain way. If he faces this way, obviously the way that they've angled it, here he'll face forward. Over here he'll either face this way or he'll face this way towards the tree or I suppose Patty and Selma. Or you can also have Homer this way here. So I'm going to try once again on the carpet because I know it did... I know it did work. There we go. It's a Christmas miracle. Or not. Christmas is canceled. No present for anyone. Spill it, Marge. Where have you been hiding the Christmas money? It is really this. Pr there we go. Where's Christmas? Christmas is canceled. No present for anyone. Spill it, Marge. Where have you been hiding the Christmas money? 
One thing also about Homer's audio is because this is an older... I'll just wait. Are you finished? Yeah? Okay. One thing about Homer is because this is the earlier Simpsons episode, um, one of the earliest actually of the Simpsons, he has a slightly different voice than what he would have later into the series. Again, I'm looking at the problem here. I'm wondering if some of this has something to do with the fact that this carpeting is higher. There just creates this little bit of a gap that I'm wondering is throwing off the connector of having the figures speak properly over here. What I'll do is I'm going to put these all into place and see if I can get the audio to work on all the figures, or at the very least, three figures connected into the playset. With all the Simpsons characters now in place, three of them, I was able to get all three to work. Yay, magic of Christmas. So, once again, we'll cycle through the different phrases. You kind of have to move the piano slightly out of the way. Hey, kids, I made your favorite cookies. And Bart. There's only one fat guy that brings us presents. And Homer. I love Christmas so much. And again, it's just a matter of which characters you move around. This peg point right here, as you probably saw over the course of this video, gave me a real problem. It works well for Marge because she has very small feet. She's also facing this way, which I think also helps the connector point to stay properly. But as you saw over the course of this video, it's still not 100% guaranteed. It's something that Playmates definitely had to work the kinks out. And unfortunately, when it came to all the other play sets that they released, they all sorta had the same problem. One last thing I wanted to show you as well is I'm just gonna move this one over and I'm gonna bring in the box artwork. I wanted to show you that based on the back of the package, I guess this wasn't the final design. Homer was in a Santa's outfit, but also so was Lisa. And as you saw, Lisa is not wearing that. She's wearing instead a house coat. This makes more sense because it would explain why her the trim around her collar is so broad. I don't know why they didn't ultimately give her the Santa Claus outfit or Mrs. Claus outfit. Bart's outfit is also a little bit different. He has green shorts and blue top versus what we got right here with the traditional red top and blue shorts. Again, this probably could have just been the original prototype images and then they've changed it since. Bart obviously could have afforded a change. Have giving him the blue and the green doesn't really make much sense. However, I think right here, however, Lisa should have stayed in the Santa's outfit that they had initially shown on the back of the box here. Now, I haven't really looked at a whole lot of the Simpsons interactive world of Springfield here on this channel. Honestly, I was going to get around to reviewing the other Treehouse of Horror sets, but time escaped me, as it seems to always do, and I never got a chance to review them this year. I'll still get around to reviewing the other three sets, so those who had watched my review of the first Treehouse of Horror set from Playmates Toys, don't worry, I'm going to review the other three as well. It's just a matter of time. This one I'm not as in love with. I love the Simpsons Interactive sets because I had a friend that collected all of them and sort of through the process of visiting him, I was able to live vicariously through him and I was able to play with the interactive play sets. No, that wasn't the reason why I hung out with him though. But I don't think he had this set. And even if he did, he probably only put it out at Christmas time. The same logic that I'm gonna have when it comes to putting this one out. It's only really gonna come out at Christmas time. It's probably not gonna come out every every month or it's not gonna stay out all year round. It's only gonna make appearances like Saint Nick at Christmas time. Um, the problem with these sets, as you probably saw with this review, it's an ongoing problem, is these connector points. This is at the time of when they created these. I don't know how long ago they made these interactive play sets, but it's been a long time. Playmates, this was pretty high-tech technology. The idea that you could take interactive characters from different areas of Springfield and plugging them in place, providing that they were compatible, they would be able to cycle through their own audio clips. That was something that we had never seen before. The trade-off, unfortunately, with that, though, is that these interactive sets can be extremely finicky. You probably already saw that, and you saw firsthand how much difficulty I had getting the characters to properly plug into place. Often, at times, I'm hearing more sleigh bells than I'm actually hearing phrases from the Simpsons characters. So, picking these sets up for yourself, there's a couple things you gotta be weary of. 
One of which, and the biggest one of which, being the leaking battery problem. I don't know what it is about the old Playmates interactive sets from Springfield. All of them seem to have problems with really cheap batteries. So if you can find one that does work, all right, half your problem is gone. But the biggest problem, I guess the second biggest problem to leaking batteries, would be to properly get these figures in place and keep them, allowing them to play audio. I'll usually, if anything, when it comes to the other Simpsons sets, at least the ones that I have, I'll put the characters in place and I'll generally just leave them. I'm not going to be too inclined to unpeg them because that's just a nightmare all on its own and then try to plug them into place and hope and pray that they're actually going to say something instead of the defaulted sound effect that's already built into the base. So if you ever want to pick up these ones for yourself, rest assured and some good news, most of them are pretty affordable. I think the most expensive one, if you don't ex if you exclude the Main Street playset, which is even at the time that it came out, it was ridiculously expensive. I know because I bought one for my friend. But I think the most expensive one is the Kang and the Kodo set. This set, if you want to pick up the Simpsons World of Springfield Christmas Family Family Christmas playset, it's only about a thirty to forty dollar price point still. I think it was that price when it first came out to stores and the prices of these haven't really skyrocketed. So if you are new to a collector and wanting to get into this as being your collection, you should be able to find these at a pretty affordable price. But just know it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to get the figures to actually cycle through their audio clips, as you probably saw in this review. Either way, though, today's Christmas video, we were having a look at the Simpsons. This was the Playmates Simpsons a Family Christmas Playset or Family Christmas Environment is what they actually called it on the box. Neat looking figures, I just wish they would connect better to their display base, but really that could be said for any of the Simpsons interactive world of Springfield. It just so happens that we were looking at this one here. Now speaking of Christmas, don't think as we're getting closer to the Christmas, the end of the Christmas season, that Christmas spots are going to be stopping. In fact, there's still a whole ton lined up for this channel, so stay tuned for those if you guys are a big fan of Christmas videos. Also, there's going to be some other stuff as well, so if Christmas isn't necessarily your thing, that's okay, I don't blame you. There's going to be other videos coming to this channel as well. We're going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of Christmas, and a little bit of non-Christmas. So hopefully all you viewers watching these videos are going to be getting a little bit of something everything catering to your own desired tastes. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. That is crucial because it will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. More videos and Christmas related videos will be coming your way. Stay tuned for those. And thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.